We've had a lot of content in this, this part of the conference, and we're going to continue with uh, that. Uh, and um, really pleased to invite to the stage uh, Steve Careful, who won uh, one of the iTech Awards last night. And um, he's going to talk to us about Alexa and the work that he and uh, uh, the Agenti Partnership and PA Consulting have been doing uh, with testing and learning. Uh, how that technology is used, and I think he's going to be sharing some really exciting findings from that. So I invite you to the stage, Steve. Good morning. My name is Steve Careful. I'm a director with PA Consulting, and I'm the program director for the Argenti Telehealthcare Partnership with Hampshire County Council. And we have conducted a trial of Amazon Alexa, um, uh, trying to answer the question, Alexa, can you support people with care needs. I'm going to ask for a little bit of audience participation first of all. Can you put your hand up if you own a device like this, a consumer connected device in your home, one of these or um, the, uh, the Google version or the Apple version? So it's a reason, actually that's nearly all of you looking at it. Um, secondly, how many of you, if you could put your hand up, are thinking about using this kind of device or have even started using this kind of device in a care context to deliver care? Okay, so quite, quite a few hands up. So hopefully this will be a useful um, session for you. Right, what are we going to cover? I'm going to tell you a bit about what the aims of the project were, um, how we went about it. We're going to talk a bit about a couple of skills that we've developed um, to, to use with the, with the devices out there with our, with our service users. Tell you who the service users were. Really important that the, uh, the, the, the selection of the service users is appropriate for this kind of technology, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, what were the results? We've got some statistics. We did some before and after surveys. We're going to share that with you. Um, what are the lessons um, that we've taken from this exercise? And a little bit about the future and what the future, future holds. So, to start with, the aims of the, obje the, aims of the, the project were to trial the potential of a, of a consumer-connected device, a CCD, uh, to deliver care outcomes, um, to develop at least two care-oriented skills, and to assess the impact on care provision. So what were service users and carers thinking about? Uh, how, how, they were, how did they respond to it? What did they think and benefit from um, uh, the use of this kind of device? And then broadly identify the pros and cons of using a consumer-connected device in the care context. Uh, this was delivered with Hampshire County Council. These are Hampshire County Council eligible service users. All of them had a social care eligibility. And uh, it was funded by the LGA. So the LGA last year ran a program called the Local Improvement Program, Investment Program, I beg your pardon, where they um, provided funds to uh, local authorities to do interesting things with technology in the care context. And this was one of the projects that was uh, selected for that. So our users. We selected 50 eligible service users. Um, I have to say there was an absolute clamour uh, to be involved in this. It's not usual for people involved in the care technology sector to be approached by members of the public and asked can they be involved in, uh, in using care technology. It's usually the other way around. Um, uh, but when this was publicised as an exercise the council was going to involve its, uh, its service users in, we actually got unprompted uh, in, um, uh, requests from members of the public and even elected members saying, oh, I've got somebody in my constituency who'd really like to be involved in this. It was a remarkable um, uh, response, and that was, that was um, really carried through the entire exercise. I'll, I'll come back um, to that and, and maybe the ways in which we can leverage that level of interest uh, to get a better engagement with tech more generally. Um, we supplied them with Amazon Echoes. Now, the choice of Amazon uh, was not uh, one that we, we spent a great deal of time on. At the time when we were selecting these, there were a couple of options. We felt this was the best one. Uh, we're not recommending this particularly. Uh, we started with, uh, with the Amazon Dot. Um, so the first half a dozen or eight people got an Amazon Dot, which is the small hockey puck size thing. Soon became clear that didn't have the quality of sound or the volume to cope with what we were asking it to do. So subsequently, nearly everybody else got one of these. Uh, we did towards the end, uh, uh, when the Amazon Show came out, which is the version with the screen, uh, we did give that to a person who actually, interestingly, had no voice. So he was interacting with that through the video screen. Um, some additional devices were deployed, so we gave out um, connected light bulbs, connected sockets to enable people to control their lighting and, uh, and different devices, appliances around the house, um, and some of the uh, slightly more sophisticated or specialised items that enable people to control things like televisions through their, their normal television remote control. Um, we, very importantly, spent a lot of time agreeing um, desired user outcomes, so um, once you... Important really to contrast this with a standard care technology installation where you're going out with a known device 
uh, that you have a very clear way of, uh, of, of installing and you know how it's going to operate, and you know where you're going to put it, you know how it's going to connect to the, to the, uh, to the monitoring centre. Here, um, we were going out and we didn't really know what we were going to do with the device as we crossed the threshold. Um, so really understanding what the user's requirements were and what they wanted to get out from it was very important. And a lot of time spent on that, and that's a, a lesson from this exercise. This is not something that you can do uh, quickly or you just don't get the, uh, you don't get the results. A lot of discussion about data and consent. There's obviously, at the moment, there's a great deal of interest in that more generally in society. It was absolutely front and center of the interactions we had with our service users, making sure they understood the data implications and the consents they had to uh, uh, sign up to in order to participate. Um, we then curated skills and functions, and I'll use the word curate quite deliberately, and I'll come back to that as well later. This is about understanding what people want and then helping them select and, and deploy the things that are going to give them the best outcome uh, to match their needs, whether that is the ability to control the lights or the ability to access Swansea FC's um, uh, uh, blog and understand what's happening with the football team. Um, everybody's needs varied, and, and putting that package together was, was a really important part of what we were doing uh, in the exercise. Uh, there were then some practical technical things. We had to connect the things up to peripherals. Those of you who've got these, which is very many of you, if you've got connected devices like lights, uh, like sockets, you'll know sometimes that just works immediately and it's no problem. Other times you're going around in circles trying to make the things function. So there was some technical work involved in that too. Um, and there were repeat visits um, for some service users. Not all, but in some cases we did have to go back and either uh, correct things, amend things, add new devices, because things emerged in that initial conversation that we weren't necessarily able to resolve with the technology that we'd taken out with us, so we, we'd go back. And then we had the before and after survey. So each service user and their carer, if they were available, would participate in a survey, asking, telling, telling us what they thought they might get from this, what they'd like to get from this, and then we went back afterwards and collected data on how it had actually turned out for them. So, skills. Uh, we, we'd committed at the outset to develop two skills, uh, the first of which was a meds reminder. And what we had in mind was the ability for a service user or a carer to put, on a, put a, a reminder on, uh, on Amazon Alexa, which would tell them to take their meds at 9, 12, 3, and 6 every day. That wasn't a function that was available when we first started the pilot, so we thought it's a sensible thing to develop a skill on. Having spent a couple of months working on this, talking to the guys in Seattle and working with Amazon quite closely, who are kind of helpful, um, uh, but, but it, it's, it's, it's not something you can get your head around very quickly. It did involve quite a lot of time and effort. We were at the point of launching that as our own skill when it became an out-of-the-box function. So at the beginning of this year, um, you, from the beginning of this year, everyone you buy will have that function in it already, which is great for everybody. It was a bit irritating for us having spent time and energy trying to do it ourselves. And there's a lesson there, I think, in terms of how we use this kind of technology going forwards. More interestingly, uh, we developed something called a My Carer skill. And I have to say, this is, um, it, this is in a fairly rudimentary um, state. Um, but it, it's a back office um, service. So this enables you potentially to manage an estate of... Um, uh, consumer connected devices. Um, we can remotely access uh, to a, the reminder skill on each device, it has to be put on each device, and push messages to the whole estate. So if you can imagine a situation where, I don't know, there's, there's a, there are flood warnings or there's a blizzard or there's very high pollen count in a particular period, you can push a message out to all um, people who've got one of these devices as part of your initiative. And when they ask for their messages, it will tell them, it will read out that message to them, which is hugely um, uh, exciting. Uh, potential. Um, yeah, a, a remote carer can leave a message. So my dad's got one of these. Potentially with this, uh, with this skill, I can uh, leave a message on his device. He lives five hours away from me to say to the carer, when the carer comes in and says one of my messages, it will, it will read back the message that, I've, that I've, uh, in, I've put in remotely to say, you know, dad wasn't very well last night. Can you just check he's okay or he's taking his medication? Um, you can record messages um, uh, for the next carer as well. Um, and and the, the, the potential of this, I think, is enormous. It, it's in a, it is in a fairly rudimentary state. It does just about work. We are going to share the code for this as part of the LGA uh, evaluation process. So developers elsewhere who want to have a go at building on this can do so. And I think this is probably an area where, unlike just standard individual skills, there is some merit in, in investing and developing things locally, because my sense is Amazon are, are not particularly interested in this back office and enterprise functionality. 
So who are the users? We initially thought we would be working with uh, older, frail people, uh, with people with learning disabilities. As we got into it and we started assessing the, the, the kinds of people who were being put forward, it really became clear that we were actually going to be targeting a different group uh, entirely. So 70% of the users in the end had a physical disability, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, for example. Uh, quite a few, as you might expect, had a visual impairment. Uh, they found it very useful, clearly, to interact with the device using voice rather than having to use impaired sight. And uh, a proportion where elderly, frail, uh, people with uh, various forms of immobility or a learning disability. About 60, 40 male, female. I don't think there's anything particularly to read into that. Uh, the age range was very wide. Um, we were pleased and surprised that, they, that we found service users who could benefit from this right across the age range, from children right up to um, people in their 90s. They all needed an Amazon account and Wi-Fi. Um, so uh, if one of the questions we asked at the outset when we first interacted with the service user was, Are you, do you have an Amazon account or would you be willing to have one? If the answer was, was no to that second question, then they, they couldn't participate in the, uh, in, in the, the trial. Um, and I, I do occasionally meet local authorities who think if you can't give something to everything, you shouldn't give it to anybody. If you can't give it to everybody, you shouldn't give it to anybody. I, I, I absolutely disagree. I think if somebody can benefit from something and they're happy to have whatever they need in order to have that, whether that's a Wi-Fi connection or an Amazon account, then, then why would you not not give it to them, and, and that's certainly true here. It won't be for everybody. It has to be for people who've got um, the technical infrastructure, if you like, and willingness to, uh, uh, for it to work. Um, there was nobody given this device who had a life, dependence, uh, a life dependency on, on the Alexa itself. They may have had life dependencies on other things, um, but this was supplemental to that. And uh, they all had, in fact, carer backup. Um, so if there was an, a situation where it, it, didn't, it didn't work for them, there was, there was always somebody else. Okay, so that's, a, I think, a really good example of the kind of service user that we were supporting and, and the kind of feedback that we, that we got from, uh, from the work. Um, we've got some, some statistics that just uh, illustrate, really, what the, the overall um, uh, feeling of users was. So 72%. Um, agree that Echo helps improve their life, 68% that it helps maintain their independence, 64% that it gives more access to information, 62% that it helps them feel less isolated, and 48% uh, that it reduces their reliance on others. Um, so overall, um, and there are lots of, lots of other stats, by the way, in a full evaluation that we'll be doing and publishing later in the year, but overall, absolutely clear, significant impacts on feelings of independence, of isolation and connectedness. A, a real uh, tangible sense of a reduction in carer breakdown risk. So, so uh, actually later on in, in that video, you see Eric going out to the shops. Um, he can leave the home now without feeling that he's, uh, that, uh, that he's, he's taking a risk. And in fact, subsequent to this video, he said that he's been able to go out with his friends to the pub for the first time for years without feeling that um, he's leaving Claire in a, in a vulnerable position. She can now call him through the Alexa device and he gets a phone call on his mobile phone through the, through the Amazon app. Um, I, only in two cases do we actually see a financial reduction in the cost of care. Um, and we're going to continue to monitor this because that may change over time. Uh, that's a relatively small number. Um, it amounts to about £5,000 per year. And I think what this reflects is the fact that most of these service users are still reliant to a great degree on, on, on physical care. And obviously, a voice assistant is not going to help with that. So it was, it was complementary to rather than a replacement of core care delivery for the majority of our service users. Um, three in ten um, were concerned about data privacy, um, but only two people said no, they didn't want to participate. And all users have kept their devices, so they're going to continue to get the benefits of those. And in fact, several have purchased more, which is quite interesting. They've gone out and bought an additional device, or they've bought um, uh, uh, peripherals such as uh, uh, light bulbs or, or switches. So, lessons. User selection, as I've said, is critical. It's not for everybody. You have to be really careful who you, you involve in this. They need to be people who are comfortable to, to take some of the, uh, the risks, but they also need to be uh, not reliant on it in terms of a life-critical uh, provision. Uh, the desired outcomes vary very widely, and you need to take time to understand what those are. GDPR and data, it is a concern that people flag up. It's surmountable. It can be got, got over. You have to be clear with people, and you also have to provide them with the consent forms to, so they re you really know that they've understood what it is that they're signing up for. Setup time could be considerable, so it's worth investing in, in, in making sure you've got the training and support in place to make sure people can, can, can invest that time. 
Some users are very high maintenance and do require uh, revisits. Um, the make or buy decision for us is a no-brainer. We, we really think that this is more about being a librarian than being a tech developer. It's not about developing skills. There are lots and lots of those out there. It's about curating. And in fact, that um, a curation point I'll come on to as I wrap up on the next slide. This is fantastic PR. Um, users and media love this. Um, we've had an enormous amount of coverage from this, and it's a great lever to get enthusiasm and interest in the tech services uh, uh, more generally. And very finally, um, all of you put your hand up at the start. You're, you're among 6.6 .6 million people who've got a smart speaker of some description in the UK today. That doubled in the first six months of 2018. Uh, it's just a phenomenal take-up of this kind of device. And it's on, we're on the way to 29 connected devices in every domestic home by 2020. Um, so ultimately, care support will integrate, and it will integrate seamlessly into users' lives through these CCDs. Um, there will be no beige box stigma. Um, there is no kit cost involved, but there are other costs, obviously, in terms of time. Um, one uh, issue we all need to be aware of, and this may change over time, if there's no Wi-Fi, there's no power, there's no service. So that just becomes a paperweight. So you cannot uh, underestimate the importance of that when you're selecting your service user. And I think for the sector as a general, what this uh, uh, sector in general, what this flags is, is a need for a mindset shift from, a, from the provision of a standard piece of technology that we go out and give to somebody to something that really requires the curation, the service wraparound, and the ability to reflect what the service user wants and integrate with their stuff and their way of living. Uh, those of you who want to find out more, um, there is a report which we're launching today. So if you want to go to our stand in the exhibition hall, we're at stand 27. And also the team that are involved in delivering this are here all day. So myself and Steve Taylor and a couple of others around. If you want to ask more questions, we'd be very happy to answer those. Thank you.